What is going on everyone? Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different here on the channel. We're actually going to be taking a look at a laptop, which is not just any laptop. It is a $9,000 behemoth with an ultra-wide display, G-Sync, 120Hz, mechanical keyboard, two GTX 1080s. That's right, I am talking about the Acer Predator 21X, which is in this large case behind me, this crush-proof, waterproof case, which is basically like a Pelican case that you would buy for really expensive gear. And I guess it's a good thing that it comes with that based on what's inside of this thing, the Predator 21X, which we'll be taking a look at and testing out some games on it just to kind of see what the overall experience is like when receiving a $9,000 laptop. And it all starts really with this box, this huge box that it came inside of. So let's go ahead and crack it open because this thing's been sitting in my hallway for a few days now and I'm really excited to just get it open and really just see what this thing's all about. All right, so first thing we got in here is the reviewer's guide, which is usually sent along with uh, with most products that I get, except it usually doesn't come in a paper book like this. Usually it just kind of is in a PDF, but nice to have this for reference. I don't have to keep my phone handy when I'm talking about the specs. And we got the laptop in here, which came in a nice cloth, and it is, wow, just genuinely really friggin' heavy. I'm going to actually need, uh, I'm going to need two hands for that. All right, so while I've got some games downloading on the Predator 21X, I figured we'd go over some of the features on the outside and just give a quick overview on the connectivity and what we've got on here. So inside of this thing, it's got two GTX 1080s along with an overclockable i7-7820HK CPU, which you can overclock all in the Predator Sense software, which I actually have it overclocked right now. It goes up to about 4.2 gigahertz, and I'm going to do some temperature testing in a moment with Ida64. So below the 21 inch 120 hertz IPS G-Sync display, which has a four millisecond response time, we've got a Toby Eye Tracker, which can actually track your eye movement in games that support it. I think The Division uses it, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. There are quite a few other titles that support that so you can actually track like your aim and other things in games that support it. It depends on what game you're using and what feature it actually takes advantage of. And in the front here, you can actually see we have a full size mechanical keyboard, which is awesome. This is using Cherry MX Brown switches. And on the right side, we actually have a numpad, which can be removed and flipped over to use a touchpad. So if you happen to not have a mouse, although I am using a mouse, you can turn it over and switch it over to a numpad right on the fly, which is so freaking cool. This is something I wanted to see for a while in, uh, in laptops. I know they have their, I think it's called the Triton laptop that they're working on right now, where they're going to have a... Uh, the numpad is going, to, or the touchpad will be on the right side of the keyboard, which is nice because if you're getting a gaming laptop, you're probably not going to use a touchpad anyway. So having it in front of the laptop is kind of a waste of space. So I like seeing this here so you can really just switch it on the fly just like that. Even while the laptop is running, you don't even need to turn it off to do that. So you can just, anytime you want to switch it, you can just go ahead and switch it and it'll initialize in just a couple of seconds. On the front here, we actually have a removable wrist rest. This came off it. It's just it's just magnetic. So if you ever want to take it on or off, you just boom, you're good to go. It's really really cool. Uh, for connectivity on here, on the left side, we've got two USB three ports along with an SD card slot, and then we've got headphone and microphone jacks that you can utilize. And on the other side, I believe it's just two USB three ports here. We've got two USB three ports here along with a Kensington lock. Now coming around on the back, you can see we've got the Predator logo on there and lights on both sides. And that can all be controlled in the Predator Sense software as well. It's all RGB. The, the lighting on here as well as the keyboard and everything is RGB. So you can customize all of that stuff. But on the back, we actually have a fair amount of uh, connectivity as well. You can see we've got an Ethernet port. We've got your two display port as well as HDMI output. So you can hook up to three displays externally into the Predator 21X, which is pretty insane. And then on the right side there, you may notice that there are two power plugs coming out of it because that actually uses two power bricks to run this sucker if you want to keep it plugged in and overclocked. If you want to overclock on the CPU or GPU at all, you actually have to have both power bricks plugged in. And it's probably something you'd want to do if you want to get the best gaming performance so that you're getting all the power that you need to run the dual GTX 1080s in SLI, which we're going to be testing very soon to see how those 
uh, play some games here on this laptop. So as you can see right now, I am at the desktop in the Predator Sense software that you can use to monitor your system temperatures, fans, lighting and all that. You can change the different lighting colors for the back of the laptop as well as on the keyboard and everything. You can customize all of this full RGB control and you can also do your overclocking, which is what I wanted to show you in here real quick, how easy it is to overclock on this particular laptop. So right now I'm in the normal mode for the CPU, which is at 3.5 gigahertz and it maxes at around 3.6. If we go into the faster mode, we'll see it instantly go up to, what has it gone to now, 3.7, roughly 3.8, and up to 4 gigahertz. Yeah, it maxes out at 4 gigahertz on the faster option. On the highest one, though, on turbo, it goes up to 4.2 gigahertz, which is very quick for a desktop CPU, and certainly fast enough to keep up with the two GTX 1080s for most of the games that we're going to be playing. Um, and then also we can do our fan control in here if you want. Right now I've got it on the auto fan profile or you could set it to max. Although once I put on Ida 64, it's going to max itself out anyway. So at the 4.2 gigahertz, I'm going to go ahead and start Ida 64 with a full workload on the CPU. And we'll see what kind of temperatures we get on here. So right now we're at 70 and there we go. It's instantly shot up to 96 degrees Celsius, which is... Pretty standard, honestly, on laptop CPUs, even in a monster like this with all of the different fans that's got in here, the five fan that's got to cool the CPU, it is still going to get quite warm now up in around 97 degrees Celsius. I've played with a lot of laptops in the past that do this. You know, they when you put them under full load, they get up very, very hot. And uh, yeah, it's it's just kind of one of the factors you got to deal with when you're using a relatively small enclosure, although this isn't very, very small, but it still doesn't have... A lot of space to breathe really so 95 to 97 degrees celsius is about what we're looking at here on full load with the cpu but in most gaming scenarios you're probably not going to get up to 100 c 100 cpu load on an i7 but this is i guess you know theoretically what you could see if you really are pushing it that far and it does seem to be affecting our core clock as well on the cpu remember it was up around 4.2 gigahertz it's now dropped down to 3.7 gigahertz as a result of the, probably as a result of the temperatures being as high as they are so that just that's just really one of the factors you got to deal with a laptop even with a nine thousand dollar laptop like this one all right so here we are now in rainbow six siege you're going to go into the display and graphics option you can see right now it instantly detected 2560 by 1080 for the ultra wide resolution so this game supports that very well i've been playing it on ultra wide for the past week or so upstairs in the office and we are playing it full screen here and it did detect the 120 hertz which this monitor is using and we also got the v-sync off in here and i've got my fov set to 90 so that's looking all good right there going into the graphics here we'll go on to the ultra preset i guess here so Everything, let's make sure this is all up. Shader quality, very high, yes. SSBC, I'm going to actually put that on. HBAO+, Plus. zoom in depth of field, I don't want that on. Uh, temporal TAA, and then temporal filtering, I am going to go ahead and get rid of that. And use four times multi-sample anti-aliasing and apply all of that. And we'll do a quick benchmark run, and then I'll go in and try a game of Terrorist Hunt or something and see how it's actually playing so we could check, the, check on the GPU usage and everything. So it looks like right now both GPUs are running at around 65% usage only at 1900 megahertz. And that was on the default turbo overclock for the GPUs that I did inside the Predator Sense software. So um, right now the GPUs do seem to be getting limited a fair amount. If I were to guess, that's probably by the CPU. As you know, running with a slower desktop CPU, you can run into a bottleneck there with SLI and I guess uh, I guess we are hitting that to some effect because the CPU is at about 98 degrees Celsius sometimes here in this benchmark so I'm actually quite surprised to see that the FPS is coming down I, could, I saw it come down below 60 there for a brief moment most of the time it is up rather high but it did come down below 60 so right there we only got an, we only managed to pull in an average of 81 FPS I honestly expected that to be a little bit higher at 2560 by 1080 with two GTX 1080s in the system. So that's that's kind of unfortunate seeing it come down that low. I mean, still obviously very playable on a, you know, it's a laptop and it's still over 60 FPS there. So still very playable. That shouldn't be an issue. Maybe it's the uh, multi-sample anti-aliasing canary. Let's try knocking that down a notch and uh, we'll run it again and see what happens. 
Yeah, so that's not really giving us a, a noticeable bump in performance. Once again, the GPUs are getting limited to about 60% usage each. And like I said, that's, you know, V-Sync off and everything, but the CPU is getting really, really warm. So more than likely what we're seeing here is that the, because the CPU is having to downclock itself, it's simply just not fast enough to keep up with the two GPUs and the frames that it's wanting to push. So that's, that's kind of unfortunate. Let's go ahead and jump into an actual game though now, and we'll see if that persists within an actual game as well. Go ahead and choose Fuse here, my favorite attacking operator by far. <laughs> Always fun to use Fuse. Okay, there we seem to be getting a lot more frames for a moment when I look straight down at the ground, but it's still only about 50% usage in this particular title. Well, you know, I will uh, we'll try another game here in a few moments to see if it's um, maybe just, you know, driver optimization in this particular title with the GPU scaling, but from what I've read online, it should be getting really good scaling. But the, the colors are looking incredible on this, though. Really beautiful colors, some nice saturation, and just super crisp as well. Being that it's, you know, 2560 by 1080, but it's on a smaller screen. You see that right there? I just got a really big frame dip there running through that area. It had dropped down into the 50s momentarily. But most of the time here it's staying up around 80 FPS. So that's not really bad at all. I just would like to see better GPU utilization here on the graphics cards. Yeah, right there again it came down to about 40 FPS. And that's not something I'd want to see personally if I was spending $9,000 on a laptop. Once again, came down to about the 30s and 40s there. Coming down to, yeah, mid, mid 40s here on, on the frame rate, and the CPU is getting quite toasty. Here, Most of the time, though, it does stay pretty darn smooth because of, you know, the G-Sync during a lot of the, the frame transitions there. But when you get those huge spikes when it's dropping down to, like, 40 FPS, I mean, you're going to feel that no matter what. And I died there because I've got no audio, so I can't even hear where they're shooting me from. So yeah, we had some quite a few bad frame drops there on uh, on Rainbow Six Siege. Let's try another game and and see if that persists, or maybe we'll try a benchmark that can utilize the SLI really well and see if anything happens there. Okay, so I think I've managed to address the game issue with how smooth it was running by cranking up the fan speed to the max. I figured it with it being on auto that it would get it up pretty high, but now switching it up to the max fan speed. I'm actually seeing the CPU staying quite cool. It's for a laptop anyway. It's staying around 75 degrees Celsius here, 74 degrees Celsius. It's below 75 basically here. Oh my gosh, that's that's that's, that's a lot of barbed wire in that room. But yeah, it's it's come down considerably, and now the game is very smooth. I'm still getting about 60% GPU utilization in this particular title, so that could just come down to the engine optimization in Rainbow Six Siege for for SLI, so we will. I'm going to be testing here in another benchmark momentarily, but yeah, the it looks like the the game has gotten a lot smoother now just by putting on the fans to 100% load. I mean, you can see the frames are just not dropping now in this game, which is nice. So now it's really super duper smooth, and I'm getting shot up from behind here again. Once again, I'm not playing with any audio, so I can't really hear these guys, but. I'm trying to do my best, but once I wanted to just note again, the, the colors on this laptop, this, the, the display, the colors on here are so vibrant. It looks Honestly, it looks better than my XP270HU monitor that I have upstairs. Really, really beautiful, vibrant colors on here, and the 120Hz G-Sync is definitely nice. Alright, so now I'm running the Heaven Benchmark, which usually has very good SLI scaling, and you can see it right there. It actually is doing the job here in this benchmark. It's up around 90% utilization on both of the GTX 1080s, and with the overclock on in the system, it's at 2 gigahertz. The CPU, once again, with the overclock enabled, is getting up over 90 degrees Celsius, but if I disable that, it comes down to around 70 degrees Celsius. So it seems like the best option here in this particular laptop would probably be to leave the CPU at stock settings, but even then you're probably going to want to ramp up the fans a, a fair amount. And just how loud are those fans you might be asking? Let's give a listen. Alright, so yeah, that was the Acer Predator 21X and what it's like to game 
on a $9,000 laptop. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know your thoughts on the Predator 21X down in the comments below. Believe it or not, you can actually go out and buy this laptop. As I said, it's $9,000. You can get it on the Acer website. I'll be sure to leave a link down in the description for anyone that wants to go check out the specs and fantasize about actually buying one of these things. I'm not going to be able to keep this thing. I actually have to send it back in a couple of weeks to Acer, so I really do appreciate them sending it out for me to test it out. It is just, it's an absolute monster of a, of a laptop. I mean, having the ultra wide screen and everything like that is certainly a, a unique experience when it comes to, you know, using it on a laptop. I don't know how practical it would be to own one of these things for normal use. I mean, going around to like, could you imagine like lugging this thing into a coffee shop to try to use around people? You probably would get a lot of stares, but I guess that's really what this thing is all about. It's just kind of the attention that it can bring to a company like Acer, or someone that is doing a laptop like this. I believe one of the, you know, popular terms for something like this is a Halo product, which is meant for something that you just they just kind of make to show, hey, look at look what we can do, look at all of this tech that we can kind of cram into one device. And it certainly does accomplish that. And it certainly makes you think about what could come in the future for laptops. I think some of the features on here I do like. I like seeing the ultra wide screen on a laptop. That's very nice. I really do like the touchpad on the right side and not in front of the keyboard and the fact that you can flip that over into a numpad, you know, at you know at your own whim is definitely a very cool thing to see and I would love to see that in a more reasonably priced lap gaming laptop, maybe in the $1,000 to $2,000 range if they can work that out to have that in a laptop like those, then I think it would be really awesome to see that in, you know, come down into their more consumer friendly priced laptops. You know, $9,000 is probably going to be out of reach for a lot of people, but it's still it's still very impressive, and I really do appreciate the opportunity that I got to play around with this thing with two GTX 1080s in there, which it looks like as long as you get, you know, a game that's going to scale well or a benchmark that'll scale well, you will be able to get better utilization. It just looks like Rainbow Six Siege wasn't uh, maybe not the best game. But I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here, guys. Please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to go ahead and leave a like on it and subscribe if you're not already. And if you are already subscribed, you can always hit the notification bell so when you can see I upload more GPU reviews and tech news and other weird videos like this one. So I'm going to get out of here and I will catch you guys in the next video. Ta-ra.